Welcome to Salika build episode, Pfft, can't remember at this point, but oh, the car is not very happy. Um, and neither am I. So the car had started to develop a unhappy knocking sound, uh, which I think is the rod end bearing. So there's two different types. There's little end and there's big end. The big end is what goes around the crankshaft and the little end is what is on the piston, inside the piston at the top of the rod. Now I think it's the big end and I'm praying it's the big end. So what I'm gonna try and do is, I've gotta take the sump off, I've gotta take the secondary sump off, then I can check the bearings, see what they're like. I'd have to buff the, the crankshaft up if there's any scoring, um, anything like that, then reassemble it with some new bearings and we should be good to go, I think. This is underneath the car, so I've just struggled and actually managed to get the exhaust manifold off, so that's dangling around. But we've got oil pan number two, then connected to that is oil pan number one. And under this is the, the pistons, the comrods, and what I need to try and do is take the oil out, take this off, and hope that I can access the bearings from in there. If not, then it's an engine out jobby. So it's not a good day for the Celica. Um, she's not very happy. I've also taken the bumper off, which I don't know if you can see is in the garage behind me. Um, but yeah, it's not good. The engine is fine if the car is cold. Um, so when the, the car warms up, the oil thins. So then the, the knocking becomes more obvious. And essentially what it is, is the bearings have worn out so they've become loose on the crankshaft and then as the engine's rotating it rattles on the on the camshaft uh, crankshaft all right i've just drained the oil out it's looking pretty black like that's very black hmm oh, no, it's all right it's got bits in because this had bits in the tray um, i've just taken all of the bolts out of the sump the first sump. I'll knock that out now and see if I can uh, find any bits of metal in the pan. All right, the pan's out. There's a bit of oil left in, so let's pour it out and see what it looks like. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's much if anything in there oh yeah there we go bit of copper you can see in there so that is oh shit remnants of whatever bearing has gone and little fragments of copper um in here which must be off of whichever bearing's gone I'll spin the camera around it's little pieces like that there's quite a few floating around. Which means that whichever bearing is gone, or if they might have all gone, I'm going to change them all anyway if I can figure out how to get it out. But it's like bloody gold mining in here, isn't it? Okay, we've made some progress. Uh, bits are off the engine, nothing's been put back on, but. Uh, what I've been trying to do is there's a like a strut that goes underneath the engine that attaches to the front and the rear engine mounts and to get access to remove the secondary oil sump I need to take that off so I can get to some bolts so I'll show you that now so if we look underneath the engine so there's the exhaust man manifold I took off earlier this is where the front engine mount goes and essentially there's a bar that goes all the way across to the back of the engine. So the bolts I need to get to are inside there. I don't know why they put them in there. I thought it was a good idea. But it's not a good idea, because think about poor Will, who has to work on his car on the drive, because he's not got any ramps, and he can't be asked to take the engine out. These are all the bits that I've taken out of the car and the oil pan. So these are the engine mounts. I needed I knew I needed to change these anyway, but 
that's just that's how bad they are so that's the rear one this is the front one front one's not as bad but it's not great and um, this is part of the exhaust that's just snapped off so i just took it off because it was rattling around uh be right and then we've got this is that part so that goes all the way to the back the engine and now i've got access it's a new day and the plan is to work on both of the cars today so i'll show you what i've been doing so this rocco is up in the air draining its oil uh, it's time for a, a service so the remnants of the oil are coming out now there's just a some plug that goes in there i've got a magnetic one there's actually no metal on it at all which is good and then you just have to take this oil filter housing out uh, there's like a little nipple on there that you either i can't remember whether you push it in or if you pull it down i'll figure it out but that drains any oil that's stuck in there so for this car i only run the best oil uh, this is 5w40 uh, nano drive from miller's oils and then i've also got a bosch oil filter as well so the miller's oil it's an arm and a leg it's very expensive but there's some studies on it that it's got a 50 percent lower coefficient friction um, so the engine should run a lot smoother the components should wear a lot less and also you probably get a little bit better miles to the gallon um, so I don't know it's justified in my eyes but I uh, service this every six months so I usually do phew, not very many miles actually maybe like three or four maximum so it gets changed every three or four thousand miles um, and then I do a yearly service with the garage just to get the stamp in the book Okay, oil filter housing's out, drain that off. Uh, you push the nipple in at the bottom to get the oil out. Um, and they've got a little O-ring in, make sure you change that. Uh, before you change it, make sure you prime this one. So get some of your fresh oil, just coat it in some oil um, and then it'll seal properly. So as simple as just popping the new filter in like that, priming this, popping it back into the housing and, and then chucking it back in the car. And it's a 36 mil socket. Also what I like to do is keep the boxes of anything that I've put on the car. Uh, this just gives a bit of proof to the owner that I've actually done the service properly. Um, so I'll keep that and I also make a service record which I can show you in a bit. So what I've done is whilst I'm here, I've just put the, the rear tyre on the front. Um, so these tyres, they've been on for quite a while. They have got some cracking in but the PS4S is a pretty prone to cracking apparently. But the inside wall has worn down quite a lot on this front one. So I think the tracking must be slightly out. Um, so I've popped that onto the back and this front one's now got a little bit more meat on it. Um, so that should keep us going until I get them changed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, right, it's raining, but we're proceeding. And it's the rod end bearings. Oh, yes, finally, we've got to this bloody problem. Now I'm actually. Yes. Okay, so what we've got is this is something number one. And you can see that this gasket is just awful. Like, I don't know why it's that bad. We've got quite a lot of burnt oil in here. So I'll try and clean this out when I come to it. But we've then got, this is the oil pickup line. 
oil feed line. It goes into the main, uh, the secondary sump, and this is another cover that goes underneath the engine. Um, now I've just taken one of the the bearings out, so this is underneath the car. So you can see what we've got here is this is the crankshaft. And this essentially has uh, offset lobes on it, and the pistons move up and down and spin this round, which gives you your power. Then on here, this is where the actual bearings are, which are the problem. And I'll show you one of them. So this is one of the bearings. And you can see we've got some pitting in there, which makes me think it's been sat for quite a long time. Then it's been started up and we have some, it's like ripped some of the, the bearing out. So luckily, the lobe that I've taken this off, if you can see, has no scoring on it at all, at none, which is really good because it means that I don't have to polish the shaft then and all I have to do is replace the bearings. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean up the interfaces between the different sumps and to do that, I'm just using like a little Stanley scraper. Stanley blade's coming in handy once again. I'll show you now. So essentially what I'm going to do is just go along here and gently scrape off any old gasket. Just like that. I've done the underside. So I've cleaned that up as best as I can. And then it means when I've got the new bearings, I can put some new gasket along here and seal them up. Just doing the service record now for the Sirocco. I'll show you what I do. So I made a Excel spreadsheet because who doesn't love a good uh, spreadsheet? And essentially each time I do a service, I'll add in what I've done, what the parts were, where they were from, and then like mileage and things like that. So the last time the car was serviced was in October last year. And the car was on about 35,000. So we've done only 3,000 miles since then. Um, so it's good to keep on top of it and make sure you're changing the oil frequently, especially with a car like that. So this is what it looks like. I just made the spreadsheet myself and then I've got one for each time I do one. So this was last year's one, 16th of April, and the car was on 31,000, um, well, 32,000. And then this is the most recent one. So all we've got is an oil change, oil filter, and I cleaned the air filter as well. And we're now on 38,500 miles. Right, we're back and it is Bank Holiday Monday. Hold tight the Queen. And I'm taking the wheels off both sides just so I can access these parts. So these are anti-roll bar links and you can see they've probably passed their sell by date and they've also got poly bushes in. Now I'm not actually a massive fan of poly bushes um, so I've bought some OEM ones uh, which should make the ride a little bit smoother. So I went on a bit of a shopping spree after yesterday's dismantling session and bought everything that I think I need to be able to fix the car. So I've got, first off I've got some, some silicone and that's for sealing the different interfaces together to so the different sumps. Got some more oil, so this is 5W40 fully synthetic. And I bought 10 litres of that. So what I'm planning on doing is doing an oil change. So I'll run the car for a little bit, then do an oil change straight away and then change the oil and then it should be good. So any fine bits of bearing that have been stuck in there will then be pulled out of the car. Also I bought two new engine mounts, one for the front, one for the back and new bearings, obviously a fuel filler tube for the back where you put the fuel in because that's i think it's leaking and then there's also some other bits that i can't remember what it was that's it a gasket for the exhaust manifold uh, the secondary manifold which is at the bottom which i've taken off and what else was it oh that was it those drop links but i got some for the rear as well as the front so i thought whilst the car is dismantled and i've got a bit of time i'll spend a bit of my time going around and just patching up any rust spots so i've gone under the sills underneath and i've just patched some bits up just with some black spray paint where it's gone a bit rusty and this is like anti-rust paint um, so you can see down there is where i've done some of the sills then also 
been working on the sway bar. So this is the front one. And you can see, you know, that it is rusty underneath, but I've gone around with a wire brush, taking off as much surface rust as I can and put this uh, rust prohibitor on and spread it black. Um, so hopefully we don't have it deteriorate as the car gets older. What I didn't manage to film yesterday was sorting out these parts. So I cleaned up the surfaces with a wire brush and a blade for the steel one because the wire brush would damage the aluminium surface. Then here is the first sump. So you can see now pretty much all of the gaskets out. Uh, and I also pressure washed these down at Tesco just to get rid of any residue on them. Also shout out to OP Oils for the free air freshener. And the last thing I've done so far is I've measured the crankshaft. So one thing that you need to do when you change bearings is if your bearings wear out, then it's most likely that the crank has changed size or shape. So the best thing to do is measure it with a micrometer. So I've got all the caps on, but essentially what I've done is I've measured, pinched on the top and the bottom of the shaft and then the sides as well. So this gives me a concentricity reading. And concentricity is how cylindrical the lobe is, the, the shaft, and we want it to be as close as we can. So I noted them down for each one. So essentially if you cut a section of the shaft and looked at it down the side, we've got X and Y, and then we've got from left to right, so under one, two, three, four, and uh, we range from, cylinder one is actually got perfect concentricity. Cylinder two, three and four, however, have some variation. So we're looking at about five microns maximum variation from the width to the other width, but 180 degrees, I don't even know how you explain it. Um, five microns is tiny. A human hair thickness is about 80 microns. Um, so pretty happy with that and there's no scoring at all the surfaces so we should be able to just change the bearings out okay bearings are here so we can now start assembling or reassembling the engine so what i'm going to do is use some gear oil because gear oil is actually thicker than standard stuff so i'll pop some of this onto the bearing when i've assembled it into the shell the case um, i'll lubricate the shaft and also lubricate the opposing bearing which is going to go in the uh, top of the conrod and reassemble it all. Here's the bearing in the casing with some oil on. This is ready to go back under the car. Okay, so the first bearing shell is in and I had a look on, there's a rebuild manual somewhere on the internet that I found. So if people want it, I can uh, upload it or share it with people. I don't know, whatever you want. Um, but it has a torque value for these uh, nuts that go on the bottom of the comrods. And it's about six, I think it's 67 newton meters. Um, so what I'm doing is incrementing it 10 newton meters at a time using a torque wrench. And this just means that as I torque it, it's even, and we're not ending up just tightening one bolt to the max, then tightening the other, because it'll just destroy everything. For anyone that's actually doing this on their own Celica, one thing that they need to remember is, so there's a, little notch there that holds the bearing in place and there's also you can see there a little notch on here and there's not one on the other side so that notch needs to face this side of the engine the oil pickup line and sump cover are now on what i'm going to do is just clean all this up again with some brake cleaner and i'll pop some gasket on the mating part pop that in Fasten it up, then put the other sump on. Okay, the silicon's on. I can now put it back into the car. Now I've just gone round and the sump. <sighs> sump is on. So I've just gone round with the drill, put it on a really low torque setting, just nip them all up, and then what I'll do is run round, torque them up to the right, uh, to the right amount which is on that manual that I was on about earlier. Okay, she's on, she's torqued up, and she looks good. Now working on 
this oil pan, just putting the silicon on. This stuff's actually really good, quite impressed. Goes on pretty easily, get a lot in a tub. So I've been able to do the entire big sump and um, there's plenty left over for the small one as well. So that's all on, sealed up. Probably a little bit too much gasket, but I'd rather have too much than too little. Also some more parts have turned up. Uh, these were from GT4 Play. Um, so if you remember this guy. So this is the, oh my God, this is the old engine mount for the rear. It's just not happy. Got a fresh one. This one is actually rigid compared to whatever the hell that is. Yes, we've got fuel filler neck as well. Uh, this is being replaced because we've got a rusty one and the fuel filler's just back there. Cable back and it's another new day. Uh, was working on the car yesterday, uh, but I didn't film anything uh, as I was getting a little bit frustrated. But we have taken out the shocks and these are now just free to move around. Um, had a bit of a mission getting these off, um, but we managed it in the end couple of snap bolts but all fixable bumpers back on looking good and here is the shocks I've taken the springs off and what I'm gonna do is clean these up I've already taken as much of the rust off as I can uh, with a brush wire brush I know it looks like there's quite a lot left on there but it's really not bad and I'm gonna go over it with some paint freshen them up so they don't rust in the future and the reason why I've done that is low wind springs. This is the old one. Well, the old one, sorry. And then these are the new ones. So I picked them up off of Facebook Marketplace. They were about 80 quid shipped off of uh, someone else's car. And they'd actually been on the car for about a year. So saved myself about 70 quid. Um, I said to myself, I wanted to get some low wind springs and they came at just the right time, so I put them up on Marketplace. Just finished painting the shock absorbers. It isn't perfect, but it should keep them protected uh, when the car gets older. So this is what they look like. Just gone over with some Hammerite. It's just to stop the rust from eating them up. Um, but they look a little bit better than they were before and a bit happier with them going back on the car. The new engine mount, grease up the bolts and pop that back in. Right, the new oil filter and sump plugger in. Just filling her up with some oil now. Right, moment of truth. I've just run it on the starter motor for a little bit to get the oil pressure up. I'm gonna do it. We're ready. sounds so much smoother like there's no rattling at all anymore I'll show you so the engine's now warm just give it a rev okay all the bits in the box of goodies got another oil filter so I'm going to take the oil out that I've just put in drain it and put a fresh one in and um, this just means any bits I can get out of the engine get out of the oil put some fresh stuff in we've got um, some rear anti-roll bar links and then I've also got the same for the front it is another day this episode is really long so I do apologize in advance if you're still watching but I'm now working on the rear shocks trying to get them off and I'm going to put some of um, the lowering springs on. So we now have some new wheels. The front's lowered. Although it doesn't look very low, it's probably just because the back's in the air, but new wheels are looking really good. Could just do with some spaces, that's all, but much better. So you can see them in there with the painted shocks. And for anyone wondering, these are 17s 
uh, by seven and a half wide and the offset's 48 so there's not really much offset that's why they sit quite far into the arches um, so I'm sure with some 20 mil spaces they'll look much better. We're currently struggling to get these guys out um, so I've managed to do this end come around to this side If you are going to use flames then just be careful because you don't want to set yourself on fire or the car on fire either. Uh, I'm a trained professional. Okay the shocks are now off and oh, unfortunately the one of the shocks is probably dead. So this is the dead one and if you watch this yeah that's not very good whereas this is looks like it's been changed before that's where it should be and then it comes back up i did notice that that passenger side rear was a bit strange uh, it didn't feel just right so that must have been what it was right there's one assembled looking pretty good I've put the brake calipers in bags just to protect them from any moisture and i'm just going to clean these arches out a little bit try and get some of the muck out right so i've just finished cleaning the arches now and put some paint on them which i'll show you so i've just put some anti-rust paint protector both sides this just protects it from future use really and i've been cleaning these up as well so these are the wheels that i got I've just been trying to get this off but the outside looks Looks good. I actually managed to pick these up for 325 quid with tyres off Facebook Marketplace. So pretty good result, I'd say. And they look spot on. So they're like a bronzy grey colour. What I'm going to do now is pop this shock into the driver's side, put the wheel on, and then have it tidy up. So this is how you access the rear shocks. As you can see, there's three bolts. One, two, three. It's the same on the other side, I've got a rag in there because we've just jet washed it. I've just put this one in to hold it in place and this goes over the front two here. Um, so I'll pop that back in when I've got the rear shock. Shock's in and these bolts I've put some grease on and they need tightening to VFT which stands for very effing tight. Well, I've had a look on Google and from what I can see, it's about 110 foot pounds. Right, this corner's all reassembled. Looking good. So here's the fully assembled, uh, replaced rear shock. This is the old one that's dead that we're getting rid of. You can also see that is just not good. Then there's the new one. I say new, it's a second hand one off a breaker. Uh, it's not been on for very long, which means that it should match the one that's on the other side so i went back over and just double checked what the torque spec was and on one website it said 160 newton meters which is about 110 foot pounds and then somewhere else said 250 so i'm going to see what 250 feels like if it if it snaps a bolt then we buy some more but i popped it in looking nice just need to torque those bolts up Got the trusty copper slip on the bolts as well so they don't corrode together. And I'll reassemble these brakes and put a bit more of this uh, copper slip on. Right, it's all in. We're back again and we've got some more progress on the car. I've taken out the old fuel filler neck and just look at the state. That is just awful. This little connection piece has snapped in there. Just not surprised this thing was leaking i mean like look at that i'm just going to give these a coat of paint i've just been around with a wire brush just to get any surface rust off seems to have got most of it off okay so what i've done is attached it up to the tank oh my hands are all over the place and uh, put some new jubilees on got this one's loose and i'm just waiting on Popping these parts back together, um, but the fuel filler neck is all in, which goes up to there, and it's not rusty anymore. 
so that is joined in there the other one's joined in up there this is actually structurally sound somehow i know it's rusty but i'm going to paint that right the fuel filler pipe is completely attached to the car now so i'll show you this is where the fuel goes in goes all the way down there and underneath freshly painted all secured up and it's time to put some fuel in filled up with fuel and i've popped the final cover on just taking it for a first run around the block and wow so much better it's another day and although just showing you the car completely lowered new wheels all that jazz I've cleaned it and it looks completely different. Okay, on that note, we're going to close off this episode here. Thank you everyone for watching. I know it's been a really long one, um, but the car is back. I will probably be daily driving it in the summer just whilst there's no rain. But next episodes that are up on the cards, I need to under seal everywhere. Um, so I'll go through how I do that and we'll see what other problems arise. Catch you guys later.